Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore, and welcome to this week's edition of the Black Financial and Fraud Report with Bill Black, who's an associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's a white-collar criminologist, a former financial regulator, and author of the book, The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Thanks for joining us again, Bill. Thank you. Uh, so what caught your attention this week? Well, uh, last time we talked, uh, there was uh, the the problem that, that I pointed out, that Obama was promising, if he were reelected, that he was going to enter into what he calls the grand bargain and what I call the great betrayal, in which they would put uh, cuts in the safety net uh, on the table and begin the process of uh, gutting Social Security, which is, of course, uh, uh, Wall Street's greatest dream. So the first thing that happened even before the election is a group called the Third Way, uh, which styles itself as moderate Democrats, but has a board that is completely dominated by Wall Street, said, oh, you know, this is terrible, this talk of it being a betrayal. Uh, it's the only choice we have to save America. And then as soon as Obama won, uh, it, in fact, uh, as soon as he was projected to win, uh, commentators began talking about the very first thing the president needs to do is to enter into this uh, supposed grand bargain, to me, great betrayal. And now the, we have a flurry of uh, written stuff uh, saying that that's, it's vital that Obama do just that. Uh, out of the box, we have, of course, leading the way, as it always does, the Washington Post uh, whose greatest goal is to start the privatization of uh, Social Security. And they have a prominent op-ed by Erskine Bowles. He uh, Bowles Simpson. Uh, this was the BS report that uh, said before the election uh, we needed to start the process of privatizing uh, Social Security. Okay, let, let, for, for people, for, Bill, for people that don't know the issue that well, what does that mean, privatizing Social Security? How would that affect people? So, uh, Social Security is an exceptionally well-run program with incredibly low administrative costs that has gotten people, uh, you know, a healthy retirement, um, and it's changed old age in America from about 50% of the time being in poverty uh, to uh, a life that you can lead with some degree of dignity. But Wall Street's idea is, instead of the money coming from the government, let's take all or at least a big chunk of it and put it in the equivalent of uh, individual retirement accounts, IRAs, uh, through the Wall Street. And, of course, this would be trillions of dollars of investment, and every year they would get scores of billions of dollars in fees off of it. So this is the the unholy grail of Wall Street. If and they if, ever get and then, then, of course, if the market, I shouldn't say if, when the market takes another enormous nosedive again, people then lose even more of their retirement income. Well, they would, except, uh, of course, that you couldn't have an institution uh, that had large numbers of these uh, retirement accounts fail. Uh, because politically, it would de be devastating. You can imagine if uh, 3 million people suddenly lost all of their retirement savings and there was no social security backup uh, and they'd be reduced to literally uh, eating cat food again uh, like the old days uh, america would go berserk and so that's another part of the dream of the big banks they realize that if they get many of these accounts they would be so far beyond too big to fail <laughs> you can't imagine it you know of course, of course no one it will even better criticize them but, but people are going to be investing money in mutual funds and stocks and such. So if there's a, a nosedive, not a crash of the financial institution, but a nosedive in the value of the stocks, there's a nosedive in the value of their retirement savings. Oh, yes, and a catastrophic. You would have no safety net left uh, as a result of this, or, or a grossly inadequate safety net left. And to give people a real-world example, today, uh, 22, almost 23 years after the Japanese twin bubbles in real estate and the stock market popped, the Nikkei, which is the, their equivalent of the Dow Jones, is roughly 25% of peak value. And that's ignoring inflation, right? 
In other words, it's like the Dow Jones lost three quarters of its value and stayed that way for over 22 years. You can imagine what a catastrophe it would be for anybody who, who, where we had privatized uh, Social Security in a system like that. So this idea is obscene on multiple levels, but is the greatest thing, and it's going to make them hundreds of billions of dollars in fees. Okay, there's one thing I don't, I don't get about this, uh, which is this is all supposed to do because of this, uh, the debt crisis and such, but I thought Social Security was primarily funded by employer and employee contributions, so what, what the heck has it got to do with reducing the debt anyway? It really doesn't have anything to do with reducing the debt now. And if we were to reduce uh, the debt now, uh, that would be try to reduce it. We wouldn't succeed. We'd just throw the country back into recession like Europe. So the whole idea um, is to both adopt austerity and to st start taking a whack at the safety net, which means both aspects of it are absolutely crazy. And of course, the crazier idea is that the election results show that that's what people want. And there's, of course, that wasn't an issue at all. There's, and uh, the coalition that elected Obama uh, is opposed to this idea on the order of 80% to 20%, according to the polls. So this is a pure financial establishment. It's what I call, you know, the Wall Street wing of the Democratic Party. Okay, I got a question for you. Uh, as a financial regulator, how did you feel about the election of, of Elizabeth Warren? And number two, if Elizabeth Warren lives up to the hopes and expectations that have been placed in her as someone that's actually serious about financial regulation, what can one senator do? And two, if she does do something, doesn't that put her at odds with the Obama administration? So I was thrilled. I was certainly a personal supporter, and uh, our family, you know, sent small contribution to her in terms of full disclosure uh, during this discussion. Uh, she's already an opponent, <laughs> as perceived by the Obama administration. I mean, I don't think it works the other way around. In other words, I don't think uh, that Elizabeth Warren ever saw herself as an opponent of the administration, as opposed to a proponent uh, of the American people. But the administration hated Elizabeth Warren at times, or at least important aspects of it did, Timothy Geithner and such in Treasury. And, uh, you know, we talked about Erskine Bowles. One of the rumors is that Erskine Bowles will replace uh, Timothy Geithner as Treasury Secretary. Um, so you may have an immediate conflict there. What can one senator do? Well, one senator can't do much, especially a junior senator. Uh, the tradition of spending your first year saying nothing in the Senate, uh, which was a very long tradition, is somewhat broken, but it, it's still going to be difficult to accomplish much. Look for what committee assignments she's given. Uh, you know, is she put on things like uh, the Judiciary Committee and such? Uh, will she have an opportunity to uh, engage in her famous intensive questioning of the regulators and the prosecutors who are refusing to prosecute uh, the elite frauds? Uh, these are the near-term things that you want to look for especially. Thanks very much for joining us, Bill. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network. Don't forget there's a donate button over here. If you don't click it, we can't do this.